Hey, this is Poor Nelson with Random R Tech, and this is part four of the homework section for the mini game tutorial series. Now, this is honestly, in my opinion, the most important homework because it changes the game kind of drastically. It's adding functionality that we didn't have before. And also, it's something that I didn't show you how to do, so watching this video after doing the homework is going to be huge. So we're going to create a script to move targets around predefined points and then implement it into Unity. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a script for the moving the target, right? Obviously. So I want to be able to follow some predefined uh, locations. So create scripts, C sharp. Call this move target. So here we go. Go ahead and reload. Da, 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 da. We need a serialized field. An array of transforms. So transform with brackets will create array. So basically array is just going to be a collection of uh, different transforms. So we're going to call this waypoints. We want this an integer, so call this current waypoint. And we're going to have this equal zero, so it's going to start at zero. And then rigid body again, rigid body equals get component rigid body. Done that a hundred times, we're getting good at that. And another serialized field, let's call this a float move speed equals five. So we can change that on the fly. So the update, we're going to be running a method called movement. So this is going to be moving the thing. So here's how the math and, and the different things were, that were going to affect the different transform. So I want this to go to one waypoint and then the next and the next. So I need to check to see if it actually gets to the uh, waypoints. I'm going to go vector three distance. So the current transform and the waypoint. So current waypoint. There we go. That position. So it's going to give me a distance between these two places. So I'm going to say if this distance is less than 0.25f. So it's not going to be super accurate, but, but it's going to be good for our, our, our needs. And then if it is, the current waypoint plus equals 1. Now, we want to make it so it loops. So how you can do this is using the, the mode sign. So current waypoints, uh, not times, it's percentage. So it's like base 10, base 7, base... Th this is basically how I like to think about the, the, the modular. So we're going to do waypoints.length. So it's going to take the waypoints length. So let's say we have three waypoints, and it's going to make it a base 3. So if we get it to 4, but we only have 3, it's going to truncate it back down. So it works out really good. So it scales up and loops back to down to 0, scales up, loops back down to 0. So that's all that does. So vector 3, let's call this direction or underscore dir. So the direction, I'm going to go ahead and say the difference between these two. So waypoint, uh, waypoint's current position. Dot position minus the transforms position. So I'm basically just subtracting these two uh, and getting the vector three. Then I'm going to normalize it. What normalization does is it basically changes it to be a magnitude of 1. Uh, if I don't normalize it, it's going to be way bigger than a magnitude of 1. It's going to be the right direction, but it's going to be a variable uh, magnitude. So we're going to be able to do this so that it's going to be a constant speed between the two or three or four different waypoints. So that works out really well. And so again, basically just give me a direction to go. So position way better to move the rigid body than the transform. So I'm going to go transform dot position. So where, where it's starting at times it or add the direction that we want to go at. So basically starting at my current position and moving towards this times it by move speed times time dot delta time. So it's going to move in a smooth, smooth way. So once again, to go over this, move position is moving the position of the rigid body, starting the current position going the direction, times it by the move speed, so it's going to be scaling how fast we're going. And then the time dot delta time is just going to make sure that it goes smoothly over the course of the different frames, and it's not going to change speed. 
And that should basically do it, I think. Um, now, something I've learned over the course of this tutorial, just take a second to go through this, make sure I don't have any error. Right here, I have a mistake. I don't have movement right here. Uh, it's looking good with the waypoints. Move speed. Yep, looking good. So I'm going to go ahead and create an empty. Oh, first I want to add a move target script, obviously. And create a rigid body as well. Because if you don't have a rigid body, it's not going to be able to find that. Turn off kinematics and don't use gravity. So I'm moving it by script, so that's why is kinematic equals true. So I'm going to go ahead and create an empty target holder. Uh, move my target in there and create three empties. So create an empty, control C, control V. I just create three of those. I'm not going to name them because I really don't care right now. So I'm going to lock this so that I can drag these three in and drag those into the waypoints. Boop. And you can see that propagates it right there with an array of three. And then I'm just going to move these to where I want it. So just move that up, just like that. So it goes one, two, three, one, two, three. That's going to make a triangle, basically. Let's try move speed slower, because five is actually really fast. It's about two units per second. Slowly moving, and it's looking pretty good. And I can shoot it, except <laughs> my arrows can't reach it, so I can increase the force of my arrows here. So prefabs, arrow, unlock this, go to a thousand or so. Or 1,500. Let's try this. Ooh, much better. And you can see that it's going. That's looking good. Now, there is one mistake I found. And you'll see that I have UE. So I actually got this from a different tutorial. So just ignore that. But you can see that it's actually going to... The arrow's freezing in the middle of the air right there. And then it's also the rigid body still on there, so it's going to hit the target over and over and over again. So for later tutorial's sake, we want to fix this right now. So I'm going to go transform parent equals collision transform parent. So if it hits this target, the new parent of the, of the arrow is going to become this target. Okay. Uh, second thing we're going to do, get collider dot enabled equals false. We're going to turn off the collider so it can no longer uh, basically score on the arrow like that. So now as I shoot, you can see it just hits once and it stays in the arrow, which is kind of cool. Now again, ignore the GUI. That's what we're going to be doing next tutorial. So part five, we're going to do sound and GUI. How to implement sound, adding sound to the bow and arrow, audio listeners, looping music, sound on trigger enter, things like that. Uh, tracking the display of the score, you actually kind of saw a preview of what that's going to look like in the upper corner there. It's going to show the score. And then we're going to display animate GUI. This is probably one of the coolest things where it's we're going to hit the target and the score is going to appear where we hit it. So the GUI is going to be moving based on what we hit. So that's really cool stuff. I uh, hope you like this. Again, thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, subscribe to our video and check us out on Patreon. Or, you know, shoot us a cool comment. Tell us what you're thinking about this tutorial series so far. And I'll see you next one.